This is Isaiah Zierden, who's coming off back-to-back season-ending knee injuries. Rossell sets the high screen, shot clock down to five. Watson with the three. It's only his fourth three-point attempt of his. The guard, Jabari, spells his name with a D-H-I-N-D-S. Malik is H-I-N-E-S. A D-3 by Cole Huff. Want to get Holloway going early. Watson goes around the Grozel screen and then dumps down to the big guy. Beautiful. Quickly the other way, it's Watson. Creates the contact, can't finish. Rebound by Malik Hines, and he threw it away. Watson for another three. And an early timeout for Derek Kellogg. And Bob, you got to like the pace of this game. This is what the new rules were supposed to do. Well, Creighton's going to want to take advantage of that. They want to get to UMass's bench, so they should be trying to get the ball down low and in on drives in the paint. And Huff buries his second three. Already fourth. Zierden around the Hanson screen. Throws up the runner. Well, that, that's what happens when you can make shots. Rebound, Clement. That is a bit of a frustration shot, not getting, being able to get your game going. Clubbin, great job of penetrating in the dump down to Hanson. Brazil. Quickly the other way, it's Watson. Look how fast he gets from one end to the other. He's left in the shot clock. This reminds me of Kenny the Jet Smith from North Carolina. Watson had a very unusual line in the box score the other night. Ten assists and seven turnovers. That's Huff's third three of the first half. Penetrates, backs his way in on Grosell, but couldn't hit him. Here's Watson. Look at the speed. Again, from one end to the other. My goodness. The battle of the point guards has been a no contest. Grosell off the pretty feet from Plummy. Greg McDermott playing. Clemens penetrates and dumps it down to Grossell again. He lost the handle, wants to go right back up and does. Rebounds. It's the Jeff Grossell show. Has yet to miss a shot. Three for three from the floor, four for Watson guarded by Clark, now on the switch, picked up by Davis, goes around the Grossell screen, penetrates, kick out, Jordan for three. They did everything right to make the shot. But it was a terrific first half for Creighton. As they led by as many as 12, and the lead right now is at eight. The championship game from the MGM Grand main event. 37-29, Creighton leads it. We send you down to the Land Rover Halftime Report with Chris Hassel, Jay Williams, and Seth Greenberg. The key for a comeback, keep moving the ball. Shot clock all the way down to five. Billiken, deep three. For the night. And that was not an easy basket. And Watson goes right around high. The lead pass, Davis nearly lost it, and here's Zierden. Look out. No showboating at all there. Derek Kellogg needs a timeout. This is the biggest lead of the night. It's grown to 14 points. Creighton doing it at both ends of the floor. Balanced defense, six three-pointers. Zierden had a chance to flush it instead, just laid it in. Yeah, I, I'd like to see them, other than the ball screen, get some motion on the weak side, get some movement. Grossell goes right around Bergantino. And what makes a good post player is footwork. Look at this spin move and footwork to get the ball up on the other side. Brilliant by Grossell. To go lost to Baylor in the third round of the NCAA tournament. And Hegner hits the jump. There you go, kid. Plenty of firepower, but it could be a battle of attrition with all the foul trouble. Zierden catching fire. Trey Davis commits that foul right in front of the official. What's Grizel going to do here? How about that? He switches to the left hand. 
How about the body control in track? Through foul, and he'll get to the line. But the bad news, Craig, is UMass continues. They just very little passing in the half-court offense at all tonight. Yeah, and you take a look at Grossell here with a guard bearing down behind him. And he finishes. Yeah, I think I, when UMass takes a look at this tape, they're going to see that there's not a lot of movement. This one around the Coleman screen, and again, a possession. Eventually did wind up passing and threw it away. Here's Clement the other way. Draws the defender, kick out to Kyrie Thomas. But it's still a 17-point Blue Jays lead. There's the run in the last two and a half. Hagner, another three. Shot clock inside 10. Zier to one around one screen, then another. Can't get the runner to go. Ball didn't hit the rim, so the shot clock didn't recycle. And Hector's not aware of it. So Milliken had to just fire. How about that? Just like they threw it up. Number 12, Malik Albert. 15, Martin Trumple has come in. Young man from Slovenia, and he looks like he knows what he's doing. Well, they're just going to have to get some decent looks at the basket. Shot clock inside 10. Hegner for three. Why not? Great one of the new teams to join the reconfigured Big East. Now a 10 team basketball league. Oh, yeah. It's just such a glaring contrast between the ball between Creighton and the lack of ball with the UMass side. Yeah, and, and now you got UMass tried to go zone to stem the tide. And it's just nothing's working. And a 23-point Creighton lead. Milliken with the floater. Or was it a pass? Yeah, I think it was a pass. And you see and this is this was a sort of alley oop here. Nice catch by Grossell. Kellogg could take away from this is that his team kept fighting throughout. Nice pick and roll and Clement and Crumple his teams. Now how old were you guys when you continued to do that? How about that shot by Milliken? How old were you guys when you were playing those?